This is a quick little video which is basically about pulley ratios. I was prompted to do this by a brilliant little video that my good friend Rob over on the Zenudu YouTube channel just put up this morning showing difference in the differences between different pulley ratios were with the steam engine driving a generator. And what was interesting about Rob's video was it, it, it basically appears to defy physics. <laughs> now it's, it's not, there's perfectly good explanation of what's going on, but it did prompt me to um, do this video because I figured that, okay, all you engineer guys out there are gonna know all about pulley ratios and anyone who's ever done any cycling with a geared push bike will also know about pulley ratios because chains and sprockets work on exactly the same principle. However, <clears throat> I thought that there might be a few people out there that didn't really understand, you know, exactly what's going on when it comes to one pulley driving another pulley if they're uh, different diameters, for example. So this is an Empire B34 variable speed unit. Now, these things are bloody brilliant. Uh, I wish other uh, steam engine manufacturers made things like this, but the Empire one, I've used it with all sorts of different um, steam engines, and it's just great because you've got, you've got two step pulleys and you can simply, you've got multiple different ratios and, and, and it's just absolutely great uh, for either speeding up or slowing down outputs from steam engines. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to initially do what Rob did first and we're gonna have this pulley, the big one, driving the little one. Um, and what I'll do is I'm gonna turn it around, I'll put some markers on the flywheel so you can clearly see what's going on. Okay, so I've got some black marks on the flywheels here. This is the big pulley and this is the little pulley. I think you can tell that by the fact that the, the drive belt is sloping around. So I'll do one revolution of the big pulley and we'll see what the little pulley does. Okay. So. Right. That's under half a revolution on the big pulley and we've already done one revolution, complete revolution on the small pulley. So that's two revolutions on the small pulley and we still haven't done one complete revolution on the large pulley. Yeah, so there you go. You've got a gear ratio there of about two and a half. So for one revolution of this, you get two and a half revolutions of the small pulley. So that is a good example of gearing up. Large pulley to small pulley, gears up. So you get far more revolutions out of the shaft with the small pulley than you do out of the shaft with the large pulley. Now I'm going to change the gearing so that it's one to one. So this resembles what Rob did next, which is basically large pulley to large pulley. But in this case, the two pulleys are the same size. And I think they were on Rob's steam engine and the, on the generator. So we call this one to one because it's exactly the same size pulley on each shaft. And what you should get, of course, is identical revolutions from from both shafts so we'll do one revolution on this yeah there's a little bit of lag because it wasn't quite lined up properly but yes yeah, so you basically get one revolution they are going to spin at the same speed so <laughs> the confusion with rob's video was that when he changed to similar size pulleys the generator appeared to speed up. So, you know, that's not really what should be happening. <laughs> so um, I'll do one more demo with this. This time we're going to be driving from a little pulley to a big pulley, which is gearing down. So I'll turn it around and we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate that. So small pulley, large pulley. So one complete revolution on the small pulley only gives us that much movement on the large pulley. So no matter how much you spin this, this will always be running considerably slower. So that's down gearing. So what's happening in Rob's <laughs> video demonstration? Well, it could, could be a number of factors. As in this situation where we've got the small pulley driving the large pulley, 
with a belt, obviously it's you can see that there's far less of the belt in contact with the pulley on the small pulley than there is on the large pulley. So when it comes to drip belts and pulleys, it in the real world, there are other factors involved. And those are, for example, the cross-sectional area of the belt. The bigger, the fatter this belt, the more you've got in contact with the actual pulley. Also, how closely does the cross section of the belt match the V in the pulley? And again, you'll get more contact when you get a better match between those two things. Also, obviously, when you're um, driving from a, from a large pulley to a small pulley, it's quite a load on, on, on the engine. So it could well be in Rob's demo that the engine is laboring when it's trying to drive the small pulley. So yeah, in the real world, they're, um, there, there are other factors involved that determine it, but the physics of the matter are that large pulley to small pulley is gearing up, small pulley to large pulley is gearing down. And uh, I think that was, uh, the, the, the Empire unit demonstrates this very well indeed. So like I said, just a real quick video that was inspired by Rob's video, because just in case there were a few people out there that you know weren't quite, uh, okay with what's going on when it comes to pulleys or what should be going on when it comes to pulleys and, and pulley gear ratios okay that's it just a very quick one um hope you found this interesting and informative as always thanks for watching cheers